Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdale here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you some upcoming research of mine. The research is connected with differential equations, and it's kind of some research and some pedagogy, some learning and teaching of differential equations. Anyway, hope you really enjoy it. Now, it's a very long title, um, but basically you can see here the nature of the research involves Bernoulli differential equations and the method of exactness or exact differential equations. Now, most mathematics or engineering students see this exact methods in a first year university. Even if you haven't seen that, just you know, bear with me because I think this is a very accessible article. Now, this um, paper will appear in the International Journal of Mathematical Education in Science and Technology. And I've also um, put a link in the description. Okay, just looking at the live chat. Hello, Clara. Thanks for your message. Um, so let me step you through it, and it's very, very accessible. It's not really high-powered research. Okay, so essentially I'm going to give you an abstract, an introduction, and um, approach and main result. Hello, Namor. Nice message. Thank you. All right. Now, I've split the abstract up into dot points. Okay, so just bear with me. All right. Now, you probably have heard of exact differential equations. They have a really rich history going back to Euler and they enjoy applications in thermodynamics and also electromagnetism. Now I was reading a paper by Azevedo and Valentino in the same journal where this um, paper is going to appear and they looked at a generalized Bernoulli equation. Okay, I'll show you what that is in a minute. And what they did was they very cleverly used a substitution and turned a non-linear problem into a linear problem. Oh, I love it. Okay, it's brilliant. Taking something difficult and making it simple through a substitution. Okay, now, so what, what did I do? Well, I'm going to solve the same problem through an alternative method, basically um, using an exact approach. So how does that fit in with what these guys have done? Well, basically, I think it breathes new, um, it breathes new life into exact differential equations. So when you study exact differential equations in university, it's not very clear what they're for or how interesting they are. Whereas linear problems, very interesting, lots of applications. Okay, so this is where the, this sort of pedagogy, learning and teaching stuff comes in. Um, it, the, the ideas can be used to breathe new life into uh, exact differential equations. All right, and lastly, I'm going to show you a little application involving the Gompertz equation, which is in biomathematics. Okay. I've noticed that the live chat is going mental. So hi, everyone. Thanks for all your comments. Keep it up. If not, uh, chat between yourselves as well. All right, so let's get down to it. So here is what is being referred to as a generalized Bernoulli equation. Okay, it's a first order problem. The unknown function is y, and so you've got dy dx plus this equals this. Now, you'll probably see that when g of y is some sort of power function, then you get the absolute classic um, Bernoulli problem that you would see in a first course in differential equations, okay? Now, Azevedo and Valentino made this following assumption. They assumed that this h of y is sort of like a combination of this g of y and the integral of 1 on g of y. Now, I'll make that same assumption. 
Okay, so what did they do? Well, they made a substitution u equals this on this just by rearranging and essentially they turned this non-linear problem into a linear problem. Okay, and if you're interested in seeing how they did that, I'll put a, a link um, uh, in the bibliography. All right, so very clever idea to take something nonlinear and make it linear. Okay, so like I said before, I'm going to use an approach which involves exact differential equations. Okay, so what is an exact differential equation? Well, the way I look at it, this sort of form is known as an exact differential equation. You'll see the differentials have been split up and there's a condition for exactness if the partial derivative, so m sub y is the partial derivative dm dy, n sub x is dn dx, if these two partial derivatives are um, equal. Okay, that's the basic idea. Okay, and then you, are, then you essentially apply the chain rule. Now, if you look back at the original generalized Bernoulli equation, it's not exact. It's not an exact differential equation. Okay, this is not a, uh, an exact differential equation, but here's the trick, and some of you may know this. We can make it exact just by multiplying through by a special function. Okay, so we recognize that our original problem is not exact, but we can involve a function that you multiply both sides by and it becomes exact. Brilliant. So how do we do that? Well, I am glad you asked. I'll show you in the proof, but let's have a look. This is the main theorem of the of the paper. Very simple. So you make the standard assumptions like the P and the F in the in here are continuous. You also make the assumption here. Okay. Under those conditions, the generalized Bernoulli can, equation can be made exact and its general solution is given by this. Okay, now it looks very abstract here, but you know if you're given a, a, a G and an F and a H, you can, you can work these, th these things out. Okay, so let me um, step you through it and see how we go. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at equation one and I'm going to split up the differentials. Okay, so if I do that and I collect the, the like terms, I get something like this mess, but this isn't exact. Okay, but not to worry. You can say, all right, well, let's multiply both sides of six by this function here. And then what you get is this, this mess down here. All right, so it's starting to look a bit messy, but stay with me. What we would do now is go, okay, well, is eight exact? So we would let M be this part here, N be this part here, and then you would test for exactness. You compute the partial derivatives m sub y and n sub x, and you get, lo and behold, equality. Brilliant. So what that means is our modified ODE, this big mess down here, is exact. Awesome. So how do you solve an exact ODE? Well, it, it kind of involves the chain rule behind the scenes. The first thing you do is you assume an, an explicit, uh, sorry, an implicit form like this, where c is a constant, and you want to determine big F. And you can do that, again, basing things on the chain rule, 
by solving these two equations. Again, the subscripts are just partial derivatives. Okay, and now you solve each of these separately by integration. So you integrate the first one with respect to x, the second one with respect to y. Okay, so let's do that. Let's, let's actually do that. Okay, so you integrate um, down here. And it's a bit of a mess, but the good thing is you're integrating with respect to x, right? You can combine that up. That doesn't depend on x. And so you can simplify a little bit. Okay, now a of y is just your standard arbitrary function of integration because we're dealing with partial derivatives here. So you've got to go beyond constants. Okay, well that looks a bit messy, but it's not too hard to work through. And then let's integrate this with respect to y, okay, for, for this, um, uh, yes, for this n. Okay, so if you do that, you're integrating something here. Now you'll see that this doesn't depend on y, so that can come out the front. And again, you get another function of integration. So it looks like we've got two solutions here. But what we want to do is compare. So these are sort of both labeled as f. We want to compare that and that and make them equal for some choices of a of y and b of x. Now, you can see this is sort of contained there. That's an extra bit. So you could choose b of x to be that and a of y to be 0. And in fact, that's exactly what we've done. Great. So if we rewrite those then, so with a of y 0 and b of x equal to this, you can combine 12 and 13 to get this implicit solution. OK. Now, there's nothing really spectacular about that. Um, you can just do it using first year university methods. Nothing, nothing uh, amazingly deep about that. But I think A, it's fun. B, it's accessible. And, um, you know, I, I, just, I just like to, to play around with it. Okay, let's have a quick look on the live chat. Just about to send out a message to everyone. Thanks everyone for chatting and watching. It's a bit hard to um, do everything at once. <laughs> All right, so back to the program. So this is the general solution using exact methods. All right. Little example now, some of you may be interested in the application of mathematics. This Gompertz equation is from Biomath. So here it is, it's a first order problem. A and B are positive constants here. You can recast the problem into this form, which is a special case of equation, let's see if I can fit it in, equation one. Okay, so you can see, you know, P of X is, is going to be, say, A, H of Y is going to be Y log Y, etc. All right, so here are our special functions. Now, just repeat what I did before to solve this problem using an exact method. You identify your integrating factor. You go through the steps, so you multiply through by this, you go through the steps, and then out comes your f. In implicit form, the solution is something like this, and there you, you have your final solution. Okay. All right, so what do you think? I've gone through it relatively quickly, but um, if you want more details, you can see the following papers. So this is the the, the paper that, that I guess I'm, I'm sort of giving an alternative to by um, Azevedo and Valentino. 
th there's a link here for you where you can just search for it. Boyce and De Prima is a classic textbook that a lot of students studying differential equations re uh, read and learn from. And this is my upcoming paper. It's going to appear in the same journal as the Azevedo and Valentino. And I'll put a link in the video description. Okay. Now, one question is, right? How did I know that I could take this mess and multiply it by this particular function, this particular magical integrating factor, and out would pop a messy but nonetheless exact differential equation. Well, I'm not going to answer that here. I want you to think about that. And I'm going, uh, if you really want to look, look it up, you can look it up in my paper or you can look it up in the Boyce and De Prima um, textbook. Okay, so th there is a method to it. All right, so back to the. Uh, Live chat. What do you think of exact differential equations? What do you think? I, I, I kind of think I've been teaching differential equations for a long time. And, you know, you always have your separable in a standard course. You always have your, your linear ones and a few other ones. But the exact ones always kind of come last. And what I was hoping with this uh, paper is to really put some life and some alternatives and some um, joy into exact differential equations. What do you think? Okay. Well, I think I'm going to sign off now. If you have any more comments, any more questions, put them in the comment section below and um, thanks for watching. I know I've been a little bit up and down with uh, posting lately, but it's good to be back. All right. I hope you enjoy the paper, guys. Bye.